my widowhood system is a constant source of motivation. I have received numerous inquiries from English-speaking pigeon fanciers around the world, requesting an article about widowhood. Initially, I hesitated to share my method, as it had revealed no secrets to me during my 25 years of practice. However, the pigeon racing community suggested that my system must be something special when I won the first semi-national championship three times in four years, even when flying against competitors 60 kilometers behind. The key component of my method is motivation, which keeps my team inspired throughout the entire season and leads to remarkable results. Setting up the loft. The placement of the boxes is crucial in my opinion. I prefer having all the boxes on one side of the loft to keep the cocks calm. When the birds can constantly see each other, they spend their entire day observing, instead of resting on one wing as they should be. Ideally, I position all the boxes at the backside of the loft. This allows the cock to fly directly into his box upon returning from training or a race. Additionally, when the cock sits on the window bench, he can see his hand right in front of him, enclosed in the box. Any type of nest box will suffice as long as you can isolate the hen when the cock returns. While some nest box designs may present challenges during the mating period and in getting the birds accustomed to them, the benefits will become evident later on. The windows should be large enough to facilitate easy flying in and out during training. This enables the birds to practice landing and trapping without being easily frightened at the beginning. If you have enough time to familiarize the widowers with yourself, you can trap them in their own boxes. However, I prefer to clock them outside the loft using a stall trap, as it is quicker. This method avoids the need for catching and running around inside the loft, which can cause delays in their return from the next race. It is crucial to keep the cocks as calm as possible on race day. This means that the fancier should stay away from the loft as much as possible on the day, apart from the regular routine of coming and going. You will notice how easily they can be disturbed and how long it takes for them to calm down again. It is important to be able to darken the windows to the extent that they cannot look outside. I personally use white removable paint on the windows. Completely darkening the loft is outdated. I have glass tiles on the roof, allowing the sunlight to shine directly into the nest boxes and create a more comfortable temperature. Winter time. In mid-November, I separate the sexes. Until then, they train once a day. After the separation, they train only once a week on Saturdays. From mid-December until the birds are sitting on their first eggs again, they do not come outside for training at all. I believe there is no need to train the birds vigorously during winter. It is better to reduce the training and gradually build it up again. In mid-December, I move the old cocks to the young bird loft, and I place the young cocks in the widowhood loft, where they can freely choose from the remaining nest boxes without being chased away by the old cocks. This helps the young cocks develop their own personalities, and the old cocks face the challenge of defending their own boxes against the young cocks' advances. It is important to ensure that the young cocks have no resting place other than a nest box. Sorting out the cocks with undesirable personalities is crucial. If you have space for 10 young cocks, introduce 11 and eliminate the one with the least desirable traits. It doesn't matter how well he performed as a youngster, it is important to identify and address any troublemakers to maintain peace. Motivation and training. Motivation plays a vital role in the success of the widowhood system. The hens are the key motivators for the cocks. Before the racing season begins, the cocks and hens are paired up and allowed to mate for a short period. Once the hens lay their first eggs, they are removed from the loft, leaving the cocks on widowhood. During the racing season, the hens are kept in separate compartments, visible to the cocks but inaccessible. This constant visual presence of the hens motivates the cocks to return to their nest boxes quickly after each race. The desire to be reunited with their mates drives their competitive spirit. Training plays a crucial role in widowhood. The birds need to be in peak physical condition to perform well. Training sessions should gradually increase in intensity and duration as the racing season approaches. Initially, short tosses are conducted to build up the pigeon's confidence and flying abilities. Later, longer training flights are introduced to improve endurance and navigation skills. Regular training helps maintain the pigeon's fitness level and sharpens their racing instincts. Feeding and care. A balanced diet is essential for optimal performance. High-quality pigeon feed, consisting of a mixture of grains, is provided to the pigeons. It's important to adjust the feeding regimen according to the pigeon's energy requirements during different stages of training and racing. Water should be readily available to the pigeons at all times. Clean water sources are crucial for hydration, especially during warmer months. Regular loft maintenance, including cleaning and disinfection, helps prevent the spread of diseases and ensures a healthy living environment for the birds. Health and medical care. Regular health checks are important to identify any potential health issues. 
consulting with a veterinarian who specializes in pigeon health is recommended. Vaccinations and treatments for common pigeon diseases should be administered as advised by the veterinarian. Observation and record keeping. Maintaining detailed records is crucial for tracking the pigeon's performance and making informed decisions. Recording the bird's training sessions, race results, arrival times, and other relevant information helps identify patterns, strengths, and weaknesses. This data can be used to adjust training routines, pairings, and other aspects of the widowhood system for optimal results. Monitoring the pigeon's behavior and overall well-being is essential. Observing their flying patterns, body condition, and any signs of stress or illness allows prompt intervention if needed. In conclusion, the widowhood system relies on motivation, training, proper care, and continuous monitoring of the pigeon's well-being. By utilizing these strategies, fanciers aim to maximize the performance of their racing pigeons throughout the racing season. Breeding. Breeding plays a crucial role in the widowhood system. Pigeon fanciers carefully select pairs based on the performance and genetic potential of the birds. Breeding pairs are chosen with the aim of producing offspring with excellent racing abilities. The offspring from successful pairs are often considered valuable for future racing or breeding purposes. Pairing and Separation Before the racing season, the pigeons are paired up. The fancier pairs a cock, male pigeon, with a hen, female pigeon, and allows them to mate. This mating period helps establish a strong bond between the birds. Once the hens lay their eggs, they are removed from the loft and placed in a separate compartment or loft. This separation leaves the cocks on widowhood. Widowhood racing. During the racing season, the cocks remain in the loft while the hens are kept in a separate compartment. The hens are visible to the cocks but are inaccessible. The presence of the hens serves as a strong motivator for the cocks to return to the loft quickly after each race. The widowhood system relies on the natural homing instinct of the pigeons. The cocks are trained to fly back to their loft as fast as possible, driven by the desire to reunite with their mates. The competition and desire for companionship encourage the pigeons to push themselves and strive for better racing performances. Racing Management Pigeon fanciers carefully manage the racing schedule and distances for their birds. The pigeons participate in organized races of varying lengths, starting from shorter distances and gradually progressing to longer races as the season unfolds. The race routes are predetermined, and the pigeons must navigate their way back to the loft from the release point. The fancier tracks the race results and arrival times of the pigeons to evaluate their performance. This data helps identify the top performing pigeons and allows for further breeding and selection decisions. Care and Training Proper care and training are essential for the pigeons' well-being and racing success. The birds should be provided with a balanced and nutritious diet. A combination of high-quality pigeon feed, rich in essential nutrients, and additional supplements is often given to support their energy requirements. Regular training flights are conducted to prepare the pigeons for the racing season. The training sessions gradually increase in distance and intensity, helping the birds build endurance, develop navigation skills, and familiarize themselves with the racing routes. Health and medical care. Maintaining good health is crucial for racing pigeons. Regular health checks, including vaccinations and parasite control, are conducted to prevent and manage diseases. If a pigeon becomes injured or unwell, Appropriate medical treatment is administered promptly to aid in its recovery. Dry widowhood. This is the system I personally like best. My experience is when you follow this system the results of the cock stay good for about 5, 6 weeks. When you follow the classical way the results are getting worse after 3, 4 weeks. This may be because of a less quality bird's problem, but normally it is a more a natural problem. When the cock finds his hen after the race there is only one thought, he wants to keep her and chase her on eggs again. And when the fancier removes his hen each time after a short while, the cock easily gets disappointed and that is translated in the results. That problem is solved following. They can get used to the system and find after two training tosses their hen in the nest box. After two weeks they can keep their hen, get eggs again and after 10 days sitting on eggs the real widowhood season starts. To my experience following this system the cocks have better results for a longer period than normal. When you feel the dip comes moving and you have to start using tricks. About the tricks later. The loft training system. As already mentioned my birds do not train at all in winter. I want to bring the flying condition back so I get later on the possibility to build it up again. The training starts when all pairs are sitting for about 5 days on eggs. During the week only the cocks are let out at about 16.00 o'clock and in the weekend the hens at about 14.00 o'clock. First I have to get them instead from entering the young bird loft into the old bird loft. 
When this is done the hens are let out by my wife each day at 14.00 o'clock and I let the cocks out at 16.00 o'clock and all are chased up in order to fly. When the youngsters are about 5, 7 days old, they are fed twice a day with some picking stone and pressed corn. From that moment on there is only one training a day. Around 16.00 o'clock I put hens and cocks out and by then it should be clear for the fancier how the situation is. They should train easily for at least one full hour. When the youngsters are about 17 days old this is getting a little bit less when they get interested to start a new nest again. When they are sitting on eggs again both sexes are trained separately again. Till the point of 10 days is reached and the birds are put on the widowhood system. The first week of the widowhood everything is done quietly in order to get no nervous cocks that stay out for a night or when trained twice a day they don't fly the whole day and ruin their condition for a couple of weeks. The second week there are morning trainings also and the third week it is getting to how it should be. They have seen the hens again and are more attached to the loft and their nest box than the first two weeks. After the third week the morning training is easy, not forced. The cocks are let out and may enter and find themselves not free to go out again. In the evening it is different. The windows of the loft are open for one hour and they may fly free in and out again. After a full hour they all are chased out again and when they enter again they to stay in and are fed. The road training schedule. When you fly the widowhood system instead of the natural system you'll find the widowhood cocks train easily 2,5 hour a day. By these training times I do not think it to be necessary to train my birds on the road daily. I only use the road training as a way to refresh their attitude when I see less interest in flying or fear a dip. Before the season starts I train them 4,5 times up to 60 kilometers when the weather is okay and not too cold. It has happened I put them without any toss straight into the first 90 kilometers race and found the results satisfying enough. However when you want to do a road training I prefer to do it that afternoon when the barley is exchanged for the good food, so they can deal with the extra sprinting they have done. Of course in the middle of the week no hens are shown to the cocks ever. The curing system. Because of my work for the Medical University of Amsterdam, AMC, I'm often considered to be a man who knows all about of medicine. How wrong however is it to give your birds all the products advertised in the magazines. The moment there is trouble be sure you are in trouble. You'll find only the most strong product to work and when you work with that type regularly, when it is really needed, nothing will help your birds to get better again. Sometimes I make use of medicines, but only when it is needed or when they are because of circumstances close to a dip and then be sure it helps. When you have excellent results over many years you'll almost never get the compliment of having such good birds. No, they talk in groups in the street what you could possibly give to your pigeons. Believe me there are only a few things you can believe in pigeon sport. Good birds. A healthy loft. Special methods. A fancier willing to learn all about the above mentioned three points, sees all what happens in the loft and can think like a pigeon. My well-meant advice. Good strong birds keep the sicknesses out easier. Work on this point. Once you have good strong birds, look for constantly for better and if you find them, buy them. Problems with the respiratory system are always a matter of a bad ventilation. Work on this point. Once you have a good loft, never change it. Further work on your methods, that means reading, studying, thinking and using your eyes on the loft of a successful fancier. Never change your method totally but pick out the good points from somebody else's method. And last, don't get lazy. After the mating in case of not many fights I do not cure for cancer. When they are sitting on their first eggs they get two cures each for a week long, one with tea of herbs and the other with a half cut in bulb of garlic. That cleans the blood and makes it thin, both needed when you start training again. When they are in the period of sitting on eggs close before they are put on widowhood I cure them for five days with emtrol for cancer. You can only treat with emtrol when you keep the birds home for a week and be sure to follow the guidelines going with this product. When you do this you keep your birds clean for four, five weeks from cancer. Then use another product on ronidazole basis for four days starting the day of the return. This you can use without doing any harm, and even overdose, between two races. When you go into a race over 400 kilometers when the birds spend more nights in the basket, then race every two weeks and you can repeat the emtrol cure. However do not cure for cancer more than once a month. When the weather starts getting warmer then you should think about a cure regarding the respiratory system. When it is getting dry in the air pigeons can get slime and a small light cure with a product for ornithosis mostly solves the problem. And when you have a serious problem, visit a vet specialized in pigeons. For the rest use your common sense and try to be your own vet as much as possible. Cures during the week. Saturday on the return, electrolytes plus pure vitamin C. Saturday evening, propolis. Sunday, tea of herbs. Tuesday, propolis. Thursday, vitamin C. 
Friday, when it is hot electrolytes. That's it. Pigeons themselves can make almost all vitamins out of the food they get. Good food solves the vitamin problem. Giving lots of vitamins in fact is throwing away money. Only vitamin C they cannot make it themselves, so I give that separately. Propolis is a product coming from bees and is considered a strong natural antibiotic. 12 drops on 2 liters of water keeps them healthy without destroying the good bugs inside. Do you see any secrets? The feeding system. First of all, buy good quality food. Understand the best corn is always used for human consumption. So the corn used in pigeon mixture is not the very best otherwise prices would be too expensive for us. But where we can choose from there is much difference in quality and I want you to think, why sometimes is a certain mixture so cheap? I give you two examples. 1. The La Plata maize comes from Argentina and is transported in a ship to our distributing firm. That takes quite some time and certain chemicals are used to keep the merchandise in good condition. When the harvest in Argentina was bad there is much La Plata maize offer for pigeon mixtures. You understand why I pay some more in order to have a kind of maize in my mixture that didn't travel such a long time? 2. Most of the barley offered for pigeons or in diet mixtures is European grown. Our own climate sometimes is very wet in the time the barley is harvested and has to be stored on a time it is not yet ripe and with a lot of water in it. To keep it well again chemicals are used. Fact is the best quality is used for brewing beer. You understand why I buy brewer's quality barley? I hope I have given you reason enough when you decide to buy food for your birds and above all to use your common sense because for a lower price there is a reason. In my feeding system is Saturday the day of returning from a race and Friday or Thursday, day of basking. Saturday on return, some small seeds. When the hens have been removed, peanuts and enough. Later on, some picking stone salt. Saturday evening till Tuesday afternoon, hopper fed barley. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday evening, a mixture of racing and breeding of different firms and more than enough so they can choose. After half an hour the leftovers all are removed. Wednesday, Thursday and Friday morning for each five widowers one handful of small seeds. So they feel hungry again in the evening. It is important you decide when they eat. Is Friday day of basking the hour when you give them the last meal depends on the length of the race, the wind and the weather forecast. What I give as last meal is a mixture of small seeds and the racing slash breeding mix. Around 17.00 o'clock some small seeds so they drink again. When Thursday is day of basking I start with the breeding and racing mixture the Monday evening. Thursday morning only a little bit and Thursday afternoon enough, followed it around by some small seeds. The motivating system of tricks. To keep your widowers going full speed from the beginning of April till the end of July is a period of 16 weeks. To do that successfully you can understand your widowers get bored soon when you follow every week the same schedule. So you have to change your methods regularly to keep them going for the top. Some important guidelines. The training is very important, keep them going. A bigger team is best. 40 widowers enjoy the training more than 10. Don't kill the bad ones. Just don't race them, but keep them to keep the others going on the trainings. The feeding too is very important, never hopper feed the good food. One time just a little and the other time a lot to choose from. Above system keeps them on time hungry and going. Because I like to keep my racing team young, it means you have to teach them the system and each trick is new to them. Before the first race, the evening before basking I give them a short 5 km top. They get their training and feeding as normal. Direct after the feeding the nest bowls are turned around and I release the hen from the widowhood hen section. After a short while they enter the loft and they have a get together for a minute. Then the cocks are put in the basket and tossed at a distance of 5 km. They hurry home and may approach the hen through the bars of their box. The ones that understand the system enter quickly and the others feeling the food in their stomach, keep flying around for a while. Those cocks we better not pull for the money or put them on top of the race sheet for the nominated championship. The second week we can repeat this short toss. And when we feel very sure about them entering quickly and about a quick race at high average speed the next day, we can do the short toss the Friday afternoon. This can be used in the middle of the season as well to awake the team from falling into a dip. Important is that I explain to you what I do after the race. When your widowers race well, you should not have the time to let them join the hen right away. I do this first when almost all cops are home. When I go to the clubhouse with the clocks I let them out all together free on the lawn. This is to give them the idea that they can chase the hen again for eggs. Important is that they get a good chance to make love to the hen. This fact too keeps them sharp because they will be watching each other. When the second race was fast and all cocks were home quickly, it is good to let all cocks and hens out together fly free around the lawn. This too keeps them awake and give them the impression they may keep the hen and build a nest. 
I removed the hens when I returned from the club and when the beer was good that sometimes may take a while. I never have thought or felt it was too bad to leave them together for such a long time. When they understand what we want from them and what they can expect in return for it, the third, fourth and fifth race we can only turn around the nest ball without showing the hens. The sixth race in our combine already is one of almost 400 kilometers and then you can expect the first dip, too because of the distance. Therefore you have to motivate them now for the first time. Around 17.00 o'clock you turn around the nest balls and release the hens from the hen section. They may do what they want and stay free in the loft for about one hour. Then the cocks are basked and the hens shut up in their boxes. Another good trick is to let them out the Friday morning for their normal training around the loft. Coming in they find their nest ball turned around and the hens join them shortly after. They may stay together for an hour. Then the hens are removed and they are fed around 12.00 o'clock. Two you can give them a bath inside the loft. This is a good system to follow when you expect the next day a headwind race and you want them to go in it well fed and quietly. The seventh race is in our combine a race of 475 kilometers and that means Thursday evening basking night. That day I'm home around 13.00 o'clock and the widowers go out for an hour. Then they are called in and the nest bowls are turned around. The hens join them a short time later and they stay free in the loft for an hour and a half. After that the hens are removed and the nest bowls turned around again. An hour later when they are quiet again, they get only peanuts and as much as they like. You'll notice how good they will eat. Around 17.30 o'clock they get some small seeds, so they drink again. An hour later they are put in the basket and I'm off for the club. The above I repeat on every following day race. I believe when you fly the distance near one is the quality of the bird that can fly the distance. Up to 400 kilometers with only one night in the basket it is the fancier with his system that has the biggest influence on the results over the 400 kilometers it is definitely the bird. Important is therefore to have the quality birds and to bring them with the right feeding and training methods to the race. A good trick to do later on in the season is following. The Thursday afternoon the widowers go out for a training around 13.00 o'clock followed by their hens half an hour later. This you can understand is a big party for all of them. When all are in again you follow the system as described above under race 7. Sometimes when I see they are getting into a dip I give them the Monday afternoon instead of a training around the loft of 40 kilometers training toss without showing the hand. This too sharpens them up again. I have chosen for the program of races for the semi-national championship and that are for the old birds, 475 kilometers, 540 kilometers, 605 kilometers, 685 kilometers, 655 kilometers in the autumn followed by their last race over 475 kilometers sitting on a week old youngster. The young birds fly 330 kilometers and 540 kilometers altogether seven races with an interval of two weeks. After race seven I have no races shorter than 400 kilometers. That means also that I have from time to time a free weekend to spend with my family doing other things than just pigeons. However the free Saturday morning early I give them a toss of 60 kilometers to keep them sharp, and they may stay a short while together which leaves the rest of the day free for doing one time other things. Taking care of the hens is very important. Understand they do not go in a race and do not spend any energy. When you are too nice for them, they will start being nice for each other and start laying eggs. When this happens you are in big trouble. The hen should only pay attention to the cock and when he doesn't get that he will not surprise you with good results. So don't be sweet for your hens and treat them hard. Do not have too much room for them, let them fight for a resting place. Sometimes after a race shut only the cocks up in the nest box and let the hens go free around the loft. Take care that they start hating each other. Another good weapon is hunger. On race day they get like the cock only a bit of small seeds. Separated in their own section they get a picking stone, that's it. The next day they get half grit, half barley. Monday, Tuesday only barley. Wednesday half barley, half young bird mixture, Thursday breeding mixture. Only once a day and in quantity and quality going up towards the end of the week. If you have time and room you can let them out for a training around the loft so they spend energy. But in order not to disturb the cocks I don't let them out during the week. I do hope you like this article about widowhood and you were able to pick up some new items. I tried to make it as complete as possible so you have a total method for the whole season. If you have any questions you may email them to me. There are many reasons to buy my racing pigeon method. Here are some of the best reasons. You will get excellent results, 
it's a very simple system to use, it's affordable, I have had over 400 first prize winners, it's adaptable to any situation. You can use it with any racing method, natural, widowhood, young birds, it's a very effective method. There is no need to spend a lot of money on fancy pigeon products, it's a reliable system and it is foolproof to use. Professional athletes, race horses, take the same products, there is science behind this not just hearsay, it is all to do with red blood cells and oxygen in the blood, without that a pigeon will not race well, or an athlete will not win a race, if he has low oxygen in his blood, the above is fact and is 100% science. There are a few things you can do to improve your chances of winning at racing pigeons. One of the most important things is to learn as much as you can about the sport. You'll need to know the different types of pigeons, how to train them, and how to race them. Another key factor is practice. You'll need to be able to fly your pigeons competently in order to win races. And, of course, you'll need to have the funds to invest in racing pigeons and other racing equipment. 